when will the big one hit? You're talking West Coast, and I want to talk about the new Madrid because it's not talked about, but it's long overdue for a big quake. Now, we've seen some recent decent activity on the West Coast over the past few years, but what they're saying now is they have new information, new faults that have been put into these models, and really it's showing that there's things they never thought was possible before. Now, these earthquakes that can pop off, as we've seen many, many times before, they'll start in a pattern. As we've seen with some of the volcanic earthquakes, like the one that happened in Africa a couple years ago, they started marching toward the earthquake. And you knew it was a matter of time. They were going to hit the top. It was going to blow. We sat back, watched it happen. It was crazy. But in the same aspect, they're saying now those lines of earthquakes can reverse and go the other direction. Something they didn't think was possible before. Now, quakes have been observed jumping boundaries, jumping fault lines, but only at a distance of three miles. They've now observed this happening at around seven miles. Now they're estimating with this new data that in 8.0 or greater hitting California in the next three decades has been raised from 4.7 to about 7%. Now it used to be thought that these quakes would hit along one line but now they're saying the reason for this increase is because the growing understanding here is showing that earthquakes are not limited to these individual faults. They can start in one fault and jump to others. The result could be multiple faults rupturing in a simultaneous manner for a mega quake, if you will, all in one area. And they say an area ripe that fits that description is the southern San Andreas Fault. They say the area around San Francisco has a little bit less likelihood because it had a more recent earthquake in like 1906. But it's still in risky waters. But down around Los Angeles, there's an area where all these faults, even new ones, have been discovered. And they say it could be a combination, so to speak. Now, they've seen a 5.9 in Puente Hills in 1987. Three days later, a 5.6 had struck on a different fault. That killed someone. That left chimneys twisted. Break, breaking windows. They've also seen larger quakes that hit in the 90s. 1992 had a 7.3 Landers earthquake. 1999 had a 7.2 Hector Mine earthquake. And this fault jumping also occurred in the 7.2 earthquake that hit along the California-Mexico border on Easter Sunday 2010. They said the border quake directed tectonic stress towards Southern California. Now data from this April 4th, 2010 quake and its aftershocks triggered movement on at least six different faults. And those faults run close to heavily populated areas in Eastern Los Angeles County and the Inland Empire. Now they say the imagery gives proof that these earthquakes zipping along a fault can jump over large gaps and like I said before up to seven miles now so they're saying that even the 9.0 that hit in 2011 in Japan showed to do this as well and this is where they begin talking about the San Andreas saying that this is an area that has a 19 percent chance of having a 6.7 quake or larger in the next 30 years in the Mojave Desert. Now they go on to say here that this data was compiled because, you know, they have new information. They have 250,000 fault-based earthquakes. The last forecast considered only about 10,000. The latest calculations use about 300 earthquake faults. The 2007 ones only had 200. In 1988, they only had 16. So they're coming a long ways here. 
in gathering this information. Let's look at the map. You can see the worldwide quake activity here over on USGS. And all these different quake maps have their ups and their downs. Like this one does not have the Azores quakes. And, you know, those are mid threes. Not even listed for some reason. It makes no sense. Should be. But you will see the activity stretching all across the Midwest here. Virginia, Ohio, Kentucky, Missouri, Alabama, Texas. The, the ongoing quakes up, up here that are connected to fracking, but you can see smaller quakes stretching across this area. Now you can also see here the big one that hit in Columbia, and you can also see how this activity likes to pop off right down through here, and also had an, another big one down here, Gulf of California, or at, at the bottom of it. But there tends to always be a gap of activity through the Gulf of California till you get to certain spots. And years ago, we witnessed big quakes pop off in here. I mean, I've seen a lot of different stuff when you're watching this every day for years. You start to see patterns. And also another area starting to pick up is this region of the Ring of Fire. Indonesia, the Kermetic Trench down in New Zealand. And there's a big part of the ocean floor here breaking up this plate region. That also has a lot to do with the tension over here. But when other people are talking about the effects of the sun coming in, in that energy, and you'll notice that a lot of the effects, when you see blackouts, come on the sun-facing side of the earth. That's when that energy comes in. Now here, looking at the other map, you can see the Azores. One just four hours ago. You're talking 3.3s, 3.6s. And, you know, talking about an area you want to pay attention to, but yet USGS has nothing on them. Now, the only thing about this quake map is it only goes for about 24 hours, and then it runs off. You can't toggle a setting. But it also has a lot of other features for, like, hazmat and disease outbreaks, things of that nature. But it keeps pretty good track of the quakes, but... Like I said, the big one already fell off here. You can see some 5.3s, 5.4s in this area down here. And once again, the normal little swarming down here in Southern California. And this would be the area of concern right down through here. And you can see right here where that plate boundary goes right down around through this area. Wrapping right around. This area and it kind of stops and then picks back up right here. With a lot of these smaller quakes up in here happening on these streams or rivers. Runoff down on this delta right next to that fault line. I'll leave links for this and all the information that they're talking about over here with this new data. And then over on USGS, they say that all that new data is being submitted and plugged in to their databases. And it's showing more proof now that activity on certain fault lines can actually jump and be connected to other spots. That's why sometimes many of us have sat back and witnessed a big quake a pop off and not even an hour or so later up the way another one ahead. But I'll leave links for all this stuff. Just wanted to do the update on some of this new information here that they are talking about and the fact that these quakes have been observed jumping from plate boundaries, wider distances. And yes, we're long overdue for the big one to hit in the New Madrid. And as they're saying now, not too far off from a big one hitting in Southern California. 
You know, always keep an eye on the Juan de Fuca up here in this area. And you can see where these swarms hit down here at the mouth of the Gulf of California and all the way down through here, Costa Rica. I mean, these, these are uh, hot spots down here. From Panama, the big one that just hit in Colombia. A lot of activity down here because this plate seems to get pinched and a lot of the tension comes off right down in here. I'll leave links, but the key to all this is to, if you're in an earthquake prone area, is have a plan and be aware of where you're living or where you sit. And that's the best advice that I can give anyone. Until the next big one hits, guys, y'all stay safe, stay sharp. This has been Dabu7, Earthquake Update.